have two Alano Sepidilla trees. It's a very productive variety and a popular one. Our, our first Alano Sepidilla we put in the ground about 18 years ago. And it's so big that we have a permanent ladder inside the tree in order to get up to the top to check the fruit. Uh, it's a very beautiful tree, but it's very large. And we get about a thousand fruit from that, uh, possibly more. It's very productive. And our second Alano Sapodilla tree is right here. This one I planted about 15 years ago and actually planted at the same time I planted that tree behind, which is a Cogs Hall mango tree. Cogs Hall is a very compact uh, grower. It doesn't get huge like a Valencia Pride or something. So this is a mature Cogs Hall tree. Why is this particular tree so small? I mean, you can tell that it's productive. I've already picked a whole lot of fruit off of it and there's a lot of fruit left. I'm guessing about 200 fruit this season, uh, but it's more like a bush than it is a tree. Very different from our first Alano tree. So why is that? Uh, the first thing is the environment. Right here is the top of our sandy hill, and so of course it doesn't get a lot of water running down to it because water is actually running away from it. Uh, and we have very minimal irrigation to this tree. So it took a little while to get established, you know, from a three gallon plant when we put it in. Uh, and then about six or seven years ago, we had a rather large truck driving in here. He was not, the truck driver was not familiar with our farm and ran over this tree. It was actually flattened to the ground. In order to get it to survive, I had to trim a lot of the canopy off and stake it. So it did take a couple years to recover, but then it started to bush out and started really to look nice. So I wanted to keep this as a small tree or a large bush. And so what I have been doing every chance I get is when new growth starts shooting out, the new growth tends to be long and skinny. I will cut it back to the, to the little shoot that is left there. And I do that all over the tree. I just trim back these little skinny branches. Sometimes I'll trim back uh, ends also. So sometimes I trim back the, the little shoot here that, like that. I'll trim back behind it and then all this new lanky stuff, very skinny growth, I always trim that back. So here are a couple examples of trimming back that little shoot and then of course these are other examples of what I trim off of the tree. So it's a constant process, just trying to keep it compact. I think I'll be able to keep it at this size, but time will tell. So this tree has had a unique history. It's had its struggles in life, but it's producing like 200 fruit or more a year. And that really meets the needs of most households. So what can we learn from this particular tree to help people grow small and productive sapodilla trees in their yard? Um, you know, of course, I don't recommend driving over your tree with a truck, but it is important not to encourage a lot of new growth after the tree gets established. Uh, of course, you want it to live and, you know, get a nice root system, but after it gets established, do not over water or supply too much nitrogen to the tree. You don't want to encourage a lot of foliar growth. 
and so you can give it micronutrients and uh, just enough water so that it survives. This really doesn't get very much water at all. And the second thing that you can do is trim it back. Sapodilla just sends out a lot of new growth even when it's fruiting and you just have to keep trimming it back so that it stays a nice compact and productive tree.